can scoliosis affect lung function? One common concern regarding scoliosis is can my curve become big enough or can it get large enough where it starts affecting the way my lungs function or my child's lungs the way it function? In fact, lung concerns are one of the driving factors of why uh, surgeons will push surgery. Say, okay, if the curve gets too big, it's going to start affecting the ability of your lungs to function properly. And there's a lot of confusion about when this happens and when it doesn't happen. And there's a lot of uh, misinformation regarding how scoliosis can affect uh, lung function. First thing to understand how scoliosis can affect lung function, we kind of have to talk about what the causation of scoliosis is. There's three main types of scoliosis. There's something called idiopathic scoliosis, something called neuromuscular scoliosis, and something called congenital scoliosis. Um, two of those types, uh, neuromuscular and congenital, actually have causes. Congenital is when you have a hemivertebra in the spine that actually causes a curve. This happens at birth. Um, neuromuscular scoliosis is when you have a neuromuscular condition. Now, some of these neuromuscular conditions can affect lung function because they can affect the connective tissue of the body. But the most common type is idiopathic. This is 90% of all cases. And idiopathic scoliosis is basically meaning unknown cause. We don't know why it's occurring. In fact, the causation tends to be multifactorial, meaning it's more than one cause could be associated with one person, and it could be completely different causes for different people. So we don't know exactly what causes the scoliosis, but when the scoliosis starts to occur, it progresses during these growth phases, and when this progression occurs is when things can start to happen. Now, scoliosis doesn't always cause the same symptoms in the same patient, meaning if we have two exact same curves, say a 50-degree thoracic curve in two exact same patients uh, in terms of age, gender, and what that looks like, that each person may not be experiencing the same thing. Like one person could have some lung impairment or some lung function concerns and some pain and some discomfort, and the other person with the exact same curve may have no impairment in their lungs and no impairment or no pains or nothing else going on with them. So it's very pace dependent. It's very case dependent on each and every person, on their age, type, curvature, location, the severity, even their physical condition in terms of how they're dealing with the scoliosis. The most common symptoms when it comes to scoliosis is absolutely postural. We tend to notice scoliosis not because a patient's having symptoms as a result of the curve, meaning pain or malfunction or some type of issue that affects their day-to-day -day life. It's normally detected by noticing it physically. It's some type of postural changes in the shoulders, some type of rib deformity that we're seeing in the rib cage, waist asymmetry, hip asymmetry, global batter, uh, balance patterns, off-centered, shirts not fitting right, clothes not fitting right, something like that is typically the number one reason why we notice, uh, notice scoliosis in children. The postural change typically leads to, let's investigate further for an x-ray, and then the x-ray confirms the diagnosis of scoliosis. In adults, though, it's not normally postural change, even though it could be. Normally, the postural change is there, but normally what drives the diagnosis is the, doc, uh, the adult or the patient starts to feel pain. And this pain occurs because the curve is progressing as the adult, and it's progressing because of compression due to gravity. So the onset typically is pain. They go have x-rays done to find out what's going on, and they find out they have scoliosis. So if the scoliosis happens, obviously it's affecting the spine, how can the scoliosis affect lungs? Well, first of all, there is something that we know that happens with scoliosis is that it starts to affect the curvature of the, of the spine, and this curvature affects everything that's attaching to it in a physical way meaning all the muscles and all the tissues and all your organs and everything around is being affected at some level because of the curve. It's creating asymmetrical forces within the body, asymmetrical uh, forces within, within the organ tissue, and that can lead to a functional lung capacity problem. These curves also can, tend, can affect ribs, meaning that if you have a thoracic curve, can affect the rib arches, and the rib space becomes different, meaning it becomes different symmetrically on one side. One rib, uh, one lung space could be more oval-shaped in a, in a horizontal pattern, and one could be more uh, oval shape more in a vertical pattern or a front to back pattern and these different shapes can affect the the effect of they can affect the lung that's what at least what the theory is and that's why these curves get bigger and bigger and bigger the, the lung spaces get different more asymmetrical and it can affect lung function however it's not always directly related to the size of curve and this is where we have some issues as as we see patients that have 50 or 60 degree curves if they get their lungs tested it's not always exact it happens at this size of curve or at this rib rotation or at this rib problem, you're going to always see a lung deficiency. 
one other component that could affect lung capacity, not just the size of curve or the fact there's uneven forces, is something that I like to call spinal rigidity. As curves become bigger and bigger and bigger, they become stiffer. And the stiffer they become, the less, you, the less your spine and ribs expand when you actually breathe. And this stiffness itself could be one of the reasons why patients with larger, stiffer curves could have some effect on their lung function. So we're not really 100% sure whether it's actually related to the size of curve and rib space, is it related to the, the uneven forces, or could it be related to the actual stiffness or rigidity of the spine as the scoliosis progressions? You know, these lung issues are not always a common symptom or finding when it comes to scoliosis. It tends to be associated as curves get bigger and bigger and bigger, but most of these things tend to be functional, meaning if there tends to be a, a, some type of lung de deficiency, the patient never really notices it, meaning they don't have any type of noticing factors because we consider them, we consider them functional problems, meaning very few patients actually use all their lungs, like full capacity of their lungs, every single moment of their life. In fact, most, most people will only notice this sometimes during extreme physical conditions, like it may be like an extreme athlete or a high-level athlete, but that's not always true because some high-level athletes have scoliosis, like Usain Bolt, the fastest human in the, in the world, has a scoliosis, and obviously he has uh, no noticeable lung capacity issues. His curve's a little bit lower, it doesn't affect his lungs as much, doesn't seem to affect his problems. He can compete at an extremely high level, and he's obviously has scoliosis, a severe scoliosis for that matter. So the way these scoliosis curves affect function in terms of lung capacity is not completely known. The only way to know exactly how it's affecting one person relative to another person is to test it. It's actually tested to see what goes on. The, there's several ways to test lung function. The simplest way is, spi is spirometry, and that's where you're just measuring how much pers a person can breathe out, how much they can breathe out. But it's not the most complete test because it's not measuring how much your lungs can hold and those things. You can do more functional lung capacity tests to see if there actually is a functional concern going on with the lungs. But if there is, the question you have to ask is, if there's lung function happening, how do we go about helping it? And that's really, I believe, the big question is how do we help improve lung function once there's occurring? The best way, I believe, is first of all, never let your curve become big, right? If you never let your curve become large, you're less likely to, to, to develop a lung functional concern. So treating curves when they're smaller can prevent that from ever happening. That's why I'm so against watch and wait, because if you're just watching and waiting, more than likely your curve is gonna progress. If it progresses, it's more likely to cause more lung concerns. Number two is reduce your curve. If you have a significant curve, the smaller you get it, the less likely it is to affect your lungs. Now, interesting enough, this is one of the selling points for surgery, meaning that, oh, if your lung, if your curve becomes 40 or 50 degrees, it's starting to affect your lungs, so we gotta have, we gotta do surgery and try to reduce it. Well, most studies that actually test lung function pre and post surgery, show there's no significant improvement post-surgery. In fact, some studies actually show that their lung capacity actually goes down post-surgery, which kind of leads to the concept that maybe it's related to stiffness, stiffness in the spine. Obviously, if you put a, steel, a rod in the spine, some metal rods, you're actually creating the ultimate stiffness within the spine. The spine can't expand and, and relax during breathing. Maybe that's what's causing the, the lung dysfunction. So we, we don't know. But the most important thing is that every case is very, very different. The only way to know if you're having any type of issues with your lungs is to have it tested. And the only way to prevent it is to keep your curve small and not let your curve big so it actually has an impact on your lung function. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.